Hello and welcome to episode 7 of this uh, 52 project. My name is Gustav Jonsson and I'm a photographer from Gothenburg, Sweden. Uh, this episode is a bit different than uh, it used to be. Uh, it's uh, way much longer. Uh, that's because I had an interview with uh, Sereno Cantaro, the man who I took a portrait of for the fifth episode two weeks ago. And before I, I start the interview, I will just say two things. Uh, the first, he will talk about an opera uh, here in Gothenburg from uh, H- Håkan Hellström in uh, this interview. For some context, uh, that's, uh, that's a musical uh, played at the opera here in Gothenburg that's uh, based on the lyrics by Håkan Hellström, a Swedish uh, artist here from Gothenburg that has uh, many, many songs written about, uh, about Gothenburg and the life here. And, uh, and this area where we made the interview, Dramanas Kai or the Quay of Dream, is a is a big part of uh, Håkan Hellström's history. And uh, today I release my photo book, First Year with Leica. It's a digital uh, book where uh, I collected uh, my uh, top 73 photos from uh, my 365 project. I made uh, between. November 2021 and uh, November 2022. I picked uh, the photos that uh, that I liked the most and uh, made them uh, all black and white and wrote some new uh, captions for them. Some are just one sentence or one word but uh, there are also some quite longer uh, where I write a fiction uh, story or uh, just some longer thoughts about uh, the photo so uh, you can find the link in the description and thanks for the support please share this interview because i think it's uh, very important and i think uh, people like sereno cantaro has uh, has to be heard by people living around because i think uh, many people have some stereotypes about people that uh, that don't live exactly like they do so um, yeah, please uh, please share or at least uh, make a thumbs up or leave a comment with your thoughts about this uh, interview. Or if you have any questions to Sereno, I may be able to forward them to him and uh, answer them uh, in a later episode. So thanks for listening and here you have the interview. <laughs> When uh, when did you m- move here to uh, Dramana Sky? Uh, I don't remember, but uh, it's about three years ago, maybe. Um, okay. So it was maybe one fall. It was definitely before Corona, and that was two years ago, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah, so this I was a whole year. year. This is the third year yeah, after 2020, Corona. Uh, 2020, I guess, uh, Corona started. And we're in 2023, so four years ago. Okay. Yeah. Uh, where um, you said uh, before here uh, that you heard about uh, the Romanas Quay, the, the Quay of Dream. Yes. Uh, when did you live, uh, and where, where did you live uh, when you heard about that? Well, um, I. Uh, I've been always looking for places um, to live, basically, um, but also to feel free. And I just heard the name of Dromana Sky, and I, I've been passing by because, as a scouter of new places to live, I know very well all the Rivera of this uh, Yota Elf. So, um, yeah, then I, I know one guy that lives on the corner, Carl. Um, and then w- together we started doing a whole cultural thing here. Um, so yeah, it, it has always call, called me this place for some somehow. And I uh, I believe I'm I'm a believer of, of, of uh, I think I believe that people and things have soul, not everything, but 
some things have sold, some places have sold as well. And I really feel that this uh, this Dromana Sky it was uh, it has its own spirit, and uh, it it uh, attracts people that resonates with that spirit. And I'm one of those streamers. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I, I posted a video uh, two or three weeks ago, uh, depending on when I released this, uh, where uh, where I took a photo of you uh, standing off the wreck of your old uh, home, mm -hmm. uh, the houseboat and uh, the boat on the on the ground, uh, and um, so you you took the, that boat here four years ago, or uh yes. Um yeah, the picture in the picture you see the rests of a very big dream that I hold with uh, basically with my daughter. We started this idea. Okay. Um, uh, first, I when I came here, I saw this abandoned um, motor segel boat, a uh, sailing motor boat. Yeah. It was abandoned there. It was getting rotten, so I took over and I leave a year there, and then I started more of a serious renovation and in between there came uh, someone that left ab an abandoned uh, beautiful old uh, boxing boat I don't know how to call that in English <laughs> but, uh, and um, and then I said ah, I we jumped on on this beautiful wood boat 12 meters uh, with my daughter which now is 15 uh, at that time she was maybe 13 and uh, and she and she said, "Papa, I want so much this boat." And and actually, that Selma is the second name of my daughter. Okay. So, and the the name of that boat. Yes, and the name of that boat. And uh, oh, I love Selma so much. It's such a beautiful boat. And I say, yeah, it is actually. It's like, why don't we do something? I say, well, because it's going to sink, and <laughs> it has been already sink five times. I yeah. knew it. But say, well, ah, but we can, we could put her on land and create something beautiful out of her, because she was on the way to be destroyed, of course, or sink. And then it, it clicked, you know, when when just a little dream from a daughter is just like, yeah, why not, you know, why let's let's do it, let's do it. I saw it somehow, yeah. and uh, we saw it together. And for me, it's not so important that has hasn't. That hasn't happened, as you can see in the picture. Is this the rests of uh, all this uh, um, uh, riot that the police came and took all these boats? And uh, the importance for me and my daughter is not that didn't it didn't happen. Is uh, the importance is that to believe that we can actually achieve such a thing. And uh, so. Um, it's the, the most of the sadness is not to lose any physical boat or house or project the the sadness comes and the uh, the anger and frustration like my daughter says uh, call this place now crossa stromana sky oh. <laughs> she called her like that <laughs> crushing the quay of dreams yes yeah and uh, and uh, so if for me the the and and it's not the first time I'm dedicating to this. I always dream of a place tip Christ like Christiania or such, yeah. but not not so much focus on drugs and such, but a place where people can actually feel free in yeah. the city to build something, to to be creative, to squat if needed, to clean, to p plant gardens, like uh, a city that is not uh, taken over by. Uh, yeah, by by governments, but taken over by city, by people, by yeah. citizens. Um, so yeah, th in, the, in the pictures you see the rests of this uh, of this uh, dream project, but the dream is still awake between me and my daughter. We have a very strong relation, and we uh, now the dream is to yeah just travel the world. It's gonna be a new dream, but we are never gonna stop believing. And I forgot actually to mention this. This uh, this project was uh, the idea was to make a coffee, coffee place, okay. uh, donation base, Cafe Selma. And donation base because I've been living the last ten years out of uh, trash, basically out of uh, eating from the dumpster, the rest of the people, 
all the things that you see around it well it's not so uh, beautiful things but they are rescued from the trash and my life is basically um sponsored by the i call it the anus of babylon <laughs> <laughs> the 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 rests I'm a big rat yeah. let's yeah. say I'm the biggest rat in town and uh, and I I I cannot say I, I I went directly into this kind of life by choice it happens like consequently with believings and uh, but the f- first thing I understood from very early age is that people that are working like eight hours per day seven or five hours for five days per week are not uh, free and not happy and I'm not just looking for happiness I know that in misery is also a treasure but uh, what I've been looking for is to have a sense of um, first uh, a belonging but as an artist, the sense that I can be appreciate I- within my freedom and within what I really want to give. So not, not uh, necessarily uh, adapt myself to what is needed to society, but also that what I want to give to society might be needed, maybe not today, but might be needed yesterday, uh, tomorrow, tomorrow. Yeah. And this is my believing, like. I met so many people here because this is the streets, you know. The, uh, you see on the other side of the picture you took. There's a parking place and there's it's a street. So I n- I know many people considered to be criminals or drug addicts and such that pass by and they just sit with me in this uh, chaotic boat that I was fixing. Uh, I was calling home. And uh, and what I have discovered is that uh, those miseries that these uh, human beings are carrying um, are um, very common very very common much more than we think and that uh, they at least had the guts to do it out of the uh, out of the sight of the king they are just you know these people are like I'm I'm gonna get rid of however I can I'm gonna get rid of my misery my loneliness my uh, s- pain and they they go for it you see they don't have anyone say no you shouldn't do it like that because this is no they just go for it and that kind of uh, spirit it's uh, it's fundamental especially in, ki- in times of crisis that people dare to do things just by their own decision and motivation yeah. Even though if it's suffering the motivation, even though if it's misery mm-hmm. the motivation, but they don't ask anyone, and that's the kind of people I I still admire, and uh, I want to celebrate them, and uh, and I wanted to give them a coffee, <laughs> and that was the whole project, you <laughs> see. So the whole project of Selma, coming back to the project, was to create a place where we can meet, and yeah. we can, and, and someone that uh, doesn't have money can come and get a coffee and get a meal, and. Uh, mm. And maybe help at the ba- uh, as an exchange. Uh, yeah, that was the dream. When you uh, when your your daughter started to this uh, to build this Selma Selma Cafe, uh, did you think it would uh, it would be reality back then? Uh, because of the yeah, like uh, uh, my guess is that you don't uh, like to sign papers. <laughs> <laughs> For for uh, yeah, skattemyndigheten and uh, different uh, different um, departments of the city. Yeah. Uh, so did you thought this would be something that actually would happen in reality, or did you make it just just for dream day by day uh, to hopefully maybe maybe one day you could sit and drink coffee with uh, with your friends or with people that needed some uh, someone to talk to or someone to um, to just drink coffee with yeah um <coughs> well i uh, both i would say both are uh, equally true um there was even uh, someone in the center of the city when i uh, told the story about selma this boat and turned it into like a food truck 
she was so interested and she actually wanted to put it in uh, Stigbert Story it which ah. is in, in the you know the pirate house that is in Stigbert Story it uh, I don't I really know I don't know the name but they have a garden they don't have a kitchen so I say ah why don't you bring it here we need a kitchen and it's like okay well maybe ah. uh, so it, it was very concrete in one uh, moment um, I am I am more of a um, of a dreamer I am a, a quarter of a doer uh, but uh, I am I have an easy um, um, I find it easy to motivate people to 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 jump on something and I see that there's a lot of people unmotivated in this lands Nordic <laughs> lands that doesn't have any like clue of what they're gonna do in life and and uh, and and so I encounter many many people that was absolutely enthusiastic about this and let's let's work it out and etc so I could do some paperwork but when everything starts by human touch the paper doesn't come first and that was actually the main issue why Selma doesn't exist today is because the authorities they didn't want uh, to shake a hand and say hey who are you what are you doing here why you have uh, this big ship uh, on the on the parking lot <laughs> illegally <laughs> come on <laughs> like, <laughs> let's talk and i would gladly talk with them and yeah. sit and and find and even sign papers if it's yeah. necessary but starts with the human uh, um, interaction yeah uh, and that's that's the whole point and my whole uh, uh, a statement when the police came and I climbed the masts of the boats and tried to save and scream and it's like it's uh, the police were much more decent people to talk with and to find uh, war human warmth than the authorities okay. and 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 this is the thing like okay yeah I'm a happy I'm a I'm a dreamer but actually this um, this is not only my perspective it's also the people, the newcomers into this um, dreamers uh, bay. Um, <coughs> they have also uh, they have it impossible with the guy who is in charge. He doesn't want to deliver any contracts. Uh, he doesn't want to talk with people. Um, so I think that that the problem when when bureaucracy gets uh, too important and much more important than than. Uh, human values it's a sign of uh, oops careful they are not behaving like humans they are more like a machines and that's with the time when uh, some dictator can come and say hey let's get the weapons and kill and everybody's gonna obey because we have we can we, it's so it's fundamental that the citizens have uh, a, a, a constant dialogue with the uh, authorities and the authorities with the citizens back and forth to see to to have a reality check how is it growing this city to have a vision of the city you need to know all what happens in the past what are the uh, I'll say uh, wishes or desires for the future and and a dialogue who are you know in the who are the outcasts who are the ideal people you have to put all all of them in the same table and talk but if there's an AI planning all this shit, uh, it's 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 uh, alarming. Uh, it's, it's yeah. So yeah, they don't count on the they count on the um, the normal per person, as you say. The yeah, the one uh, who goes to work eight hours a day, five days a week, get like uh, like uh, twenty, thirty thousand crowns to fifty thousand crowns, and. Uh, the one lower than that and the one higher they really can't uh, can't take uh, take care of uh, i guess if you if you put an ai they can take take decisions about a selma project yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> they don't see they don't see that because that's not a company that's not uh, something that take gives money to the city mm. for the start at least yeah. uh, i started a business as uh, myself uh, like uh, three two years ago mm and um uh, it was it was a dream as well it's it's just a fun a fun thing me and my friend uh, come up with and uh started to uh, to talk to someone with the with the audience 
and uh, uh, made a deal. Uh, so we so we shouted up my switch number uh, for uh, transactions mm -hmm. and uh, sold some prints and. Um, uh, it took like uh, one one week or one and a half week before the bank called me and said, "Hey, what's happening to your account? <laughs> There's uh, kind of much money that goes into your account, uh, same uh, the same amount, but from different." Uh, and then they so I I have something that gives money uh, for to me, mm -hmm. so I I um, told them uh, I. I me and my friend trying out uh, a business mm -hmm. and uh, if it goes well we will start it and uh, make it as it used to be, uh, should be mm -hmm. but uh, for now we will just want to try yeah. and see where it lands mm -hmm. uh, and I guess that's some kind with the Selma boot as well mm -hmm. uh, you wanted to start build it and when it's up and running then we can talk money and business yes but here in Sweden, at least, at least, at least here in Sweden, uh, you need to start a company. You need to write the pa sign the papers. You need to have uh, the bank contact. You need to do everything administration first, yes. and then you can uh, point at your dream, mm -hmm. and then you can uh, can start selling your first coffee or your first print or mm -hmm. whatever it is. Yeah. and that's. That's I think that's a big leap for many many people that want to be dreamers or want to be make something, mm. but they don't really dare to to to, to, to take that step mm. uh, and uh, sign those papers, start calling the bank. Oh, when no. it's uh, when is it open and how how do I contact them? Which bank should I contact? Mm. Uh, and all those steps that are really really boring. Mm. Uh, I I think like. If you want to build something, the city or the government should say you have one year mm -hmm. or w two years, a period of time. Yes. If you don't have a really clear vision and uh, investors or something that you start with a budget, mm -hmm. if you just start with a person with a normal account, mm. you should be able to try for one year yes. and what you get, yeah. you get and what you don't get, you don't get. and after a year, the business is growing mm. or have, has fallen. <laughs> oh, yes. But if it's growing, then you can start a company and maybe quit your day job mm -hmm. and uh, and build this company more and more and more. Sounds very smart. So, yeah. uh, but for now, you just need to start climbing a wall at 200 meters yeah. high. <laughs> and <laughs> I, I understand that people rather watch Netflix <laughs> or HBO <laughs> than uh, starting to do that. Oh my God. Even if it's just yes. the simplest thing. Mm. You make a table standing on the street and selling uh, juice yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> or coffee or anything, lemonade. You need to you need to make all this work just to do that mm. and maybe you're not even earning any money from it yes you just do it for for the people like you say you just do it for the yeah. people that needs it yeah. you don't make any money you go plus minus null zero yes. so um so i can feel i can i can understand uh the vision you had with your daughter and the boat mm. uh and i'm really happy that uh, that that dream doesn't end where that boat ended. Yes, <laughs> <I think so>. <laughs> that <laughs> you <laughs> maybe will have this boat. Or we're sitting in your your other boat now, uh, and you can make this uh, able to go on the sea. Yeah. Maybe not for South Africa or South South America, but yeah, yeah. yeah. But <laughs> <laughs> there I go. <laughs> Where uh, where do you come from? From the beginning, you you talk good English and good Swedish, but uh, yeah. I understand you don't come from Sweden at the first place. Mm -hmm. I speak. Uh, I talk even better uh, Spanish. Spanish, yeah. yeah. I born in um, in Chile. Very early age, I w started traveling because I come from a diplomat family. I mean, not not actually diplomat, politic family. Oh, okay. So my my. Uh, my father was in the resistance, and my grandfather especially, against Pinochet, which was a dictator in uh, in Chile. And um, they've been working in UN and different organizations, worldwide organizations for uh, for many years. And um, 
Yeah, so I've been living uh, most many of the biggest cities in the world. I believe Buenos Aires, New York, and uh, well, Santiago de Chile, and um, they are like 30 million people <laughs> city. So for me, this is still a small city yeah. scale. I see mm -hmm. very well how city uh, the dynamics, how they grow and pulse, and I, I can see it very, very clear. I was in New York so also while another gentrific gen gentrification uh, process happened in Dumbo, uh, down under the Manhattan Bridge. Oh, okay. I was part of the artists, and suddenly the, 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 the you know the rents went up, and um, they start renovating everything and start bringing rich people. Uh, I always been uh, have this, this tendency of stepping in the borderline of. Uh, yeah, of what is uh, easily accepted, or, or um, yeah, or then the how to say the adventurous people, the outcasts, as I said. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm happy that um, have this experience. I'm so thankful for this place, and um, it was for me very clear to see this. What I mentioned that I was attracted by the spirit of this place, w after I saw the play in uh, Operan, uh, based on Håkan Hellström uh, yeah. song. And it was about the same thing that just happened a couple of weeks ago with the, with the police. <laughs> it was the same thing, the same thing. The same characters, you know, the, the in Vandrare, or the, how to say, um, uh, um, uh, how do you say in Vandrare, yeah, the... Yeah, people, for, for from abroad that comes yeah. and they don't have a place to live and uh, exactly yeah. so um, so I'm very thankful and um, um, to but but once again it's um, it's a big lesson and the lesson is that um, um, I like my values I like to be front I don't like hypocrisy and all the deals that happens here, even with some neighbors, so it was uh, a bit sensitive actually, the whole thing, um, allowed me to understand that I would never be a good politician as my father because I'm not a strategic. And Swedish people are very strategic. Yeah. They have a very uh, str uh, big inner world and calculations and how it's gonna be, how it's gonna... I'm not like that, I'm impulsive. And um, and uh, and I think this kind of impulsivity is is a very precious energy now for Sweden. I think is is needed that people start reacting to all the changes and 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 because I hear it, you know, and th that's that's the thing. I hear it in the streets. Parents that are like, my kids doesn't go out of his computer out anymore, or uh, they are so confused about this thing of the gender, or. I hear uh, people complain about electricity bills and and people complain, complain at this level, but no one really reacts or act idyllically on it. So I think this uh, uh, this energy of uh, it's it's warrior energy. They they uh, and Swedish people, um, yeah. So so I wish this story is spread out in that sense that the Swedish people get gain in inspired to to act on what they believe especially their values and such. Yeah. It's like it's like a volcano. The Swedish people starting to uh, and uh, oh. in some years or decades there will be a there will be a storm. No <laughs> doubt, big explosion. No yeah. doubt. Just like happened in Chile uh, f f some years ago uh, there was a big revolution of the students on the streets. It was thousands of students on the streets. And uh, yeah, I mean, uh, and this is all by design. And this is something else that, like, I'm not talking now of, of conspiracy theories. I come from a three generation politician family. I know that all this is measured, especially now with AI, come on. They, they, they can measure how people or when people are going to react and why and how. So, um, now I consider myself a, a fighter. I consider myself a, a, a warrior, and uh, I consider myself a, a warrior of humanity. I don't want that humanity lose the touch of uh, of uh, 
of the soul of the heart yeah. that goes beyond the money goes b beyond uh, possession and that kind of richness that is it's a richness that allowed ourselves to rest and l on one another you know to to feel that you are uh, that everyone can be appreciated and have a place in society to to be themselves yeah I guess uh, that is really important, uh, as you say, AI. Um, I guess it's here to stay, yeah. <laughs> and we have to learn to live with it. Uh, I'm I'm really against it as well. Uh, for some small, some small, small parts, it could be good, but uh, I think and now, especially now when they came to creativity, mm -hmm. uh, I think that's that's a hit for the human uh, the human uh, people uh, in board uh, because uh, we have made everything up for ourselves the economy the politicians the policy uh, the police and everything is made up by the humans but creativity is something in our souls uh, as you say and uh, if we take every work like logistics l economy everything that's really uh, yeah lin linear or yes. data you can you can translate into da data yes. uh, if we take all these works that's almost every work mm. uh, into AI then we don't have any any eight hours a day work work days left <laughs> <laughs> exactly <laughs> so what's left for the humans to do yeah. except go to work it's creating things yes. that's our main goal to cre yes. create things and when AI take over the creativity as well, mm. like making music, uh, writing books, translate, translating books, make art, uh, make photo, realistic art, anything, that's creativity. Uh, that's, that's my biggest fear, that AI, I, I think there will always be creators and artists, mm. because that's something we need to do uh, as humans. But um, when... Uh, when AI take take that part as well uh, for this transition between working humans to uh, living humans as or what you should say when AI take in our work yeah. uh, there's a transition where artists can't make money because big companies won't pay won't pay me as a photographer like 10 20 thousand crowners or hundred thousand for making a uh, photography work when they can do it in the just write something in the computer and get what they want in yeah. 10 minutes so uh, of course there will be a very specific work that needs a human touch mm. but uh, for general marketing uh, photos or uh, art or anything they can take AI yeah. and uh, creative people usually don't feel very well mm. inside mm. they are depressed and uh, everything mm. uh, so how how much do you need to take from them before they get suicide or before they feel very very sick that will cost the society very very much uh, that's that's a big uh, that's a big thing I don't think uh, many thinks about <laughs> yes. Yeah, and that that's a really big danger. It is it because is. Uh, if you take if you take creativity from the human, there's nothing left. Mm. And why do I or someone live on Earth if I have nothing left to build or to make or to dream of? Mm -hmm. And well even even AI yeah, can make something in ten minutes. Mm. It would may take five to ten years of dreaming to make that thing. Yeah. And the dream is also the goal, like the boot, the Selma boot. Yes. That dream you have the, with your daughter, mm. that's the goal. Yes. As you said, I, I wasn't that sad that they took the boot, yes. but they took the dream, they took the journey yes. to the end result. Yes. And that, uh, that I think that is a really dangerous uh, thing, but I think we will see that in five to ten years. <laughs> well, uh, I... Uh, if if you, as you said it and following your words if you take s if you take the quantitative or logistic part of humans and then you take out the creativity what is left is destructivity yeah 
And this is the thing. We are going to... Woo, the world is moving now. <laughs> Talking about destructivity. <laughs> um, uh, and and this is this is the only possible result, and we are shit. <laughs> there was a big. Uh, it's the only possible result, and uh, and we already seen it. Yeah. And this is this is this is why I believe is uh, we live in such an hypocrite. Uh, uh, in general, not only in Sweden, the world that everybody sees the damage on on our kids. Everybody sees that the kids 20 years ago were playing and full of uh, wounds in the legs and now they are zombies, uh, totally young kids of, of programs, of, uh, of gaming. And I, I, I'm talking about my own kid, huh? I'm not, uh, and, and, uh, and, and we see the desperation of parents that they don't know what they, to do. And now they are offering like the best thing, this alternative... Uh, I would say Google's for Facebook metaverse and and all this bullshit. That is, I mean, I'm not religious person, but I I, I always use the figure of, of of Lucifer, right? Lucifer was the the greatest uh, deceiver, the 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 guy who wanted you to believe that you are not part of God, but you are part of something else that is even better, kind of, right? And and a parallel, uh, universe. yeah, universe or reality. Um, and uh, so I think this is, um, and it's very, uh, it's very attractive. All this what we are creating, um, and we are so basically we are creating devices to disconnect ourselves from our own nature. So the kids doesn't 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 know even by feeling what does it mean to sit in a table with the family, calm and listen to the stories of the father, of the mother, help the mother in the kitchen. Nobody knows this any longer. And this is fucking dangerous because then we are creating like automats that that doesn't know how to deal with the world and have, uh, how to say, emotional phobia. And, and, and then for getting the, the kick of feeling alive, they are cutting their arms or they are starting to take, take drugs. Mm. We, uh, we are talking this, uh, within 10 years, the drug, the drug addictions in the streets, it's going to be massive because we are already educating kids to be drug addicts. So, so that's, that's, once again, I want to play with, with, with trash. I want to make wounds, you know, I have wounds. I want to invite my kids to this. I want to, um, like, as I said to the newspapers recently, I want to ta turn the shit into gold yeah yeah i think uh, as we said before uh before we started recording this that uh, the city they wanted to flatting flatting out the city not make it that dynamical because mm. uh, now we're sitting here in a boat and the quay is uh, full of uh, boats uh, with people that dream dreams about the that their boat can be out uh, on the sea in a few years or so uh, and men in boots may may never do that, <laughs> if we need to be honest. Mm. Uh, but like 300 meters from here, there's a huge glass building of a new built hotel. Ah oh, yes. And uh, even further, there are apartments for like four, five, six million, mm. ten million dollars, uh, uh, Swedish crowns. Yeah. Uh, and they are even building the biggest tower in uh, Nordic. Uh, where the apartments will be like uh, I don't even know the amount of money you need to pay on that one uh, and the city needs dynamic mm. there need to be some trash there need to be some uh, highest highest top and there need to be some normal yeah. that's the same with the human I think uh, as you said they don't l we, we learn how to make addicts uh, I think the human needs to learn how to have boring uh, how how to be in a boring situation yeah, and yeah. that ki yeah. kids kids don't learn that no, today sure. if they are bored they open tiktok Absolutely. they open instagram yeah, or yeah. snapchat if they are bored they can open uh, they can start playing uh, xbox or anything uh, you're never allowed to be bored mm. and if any company sees a place or a situation where someone gets bored they will fill up that with something that just trigger your addiction yes, yes. and um, I think 
that that flat mouse that that will that will have curved flat out mm -hmm. because it's always normal always mm. you don't get you don't get the tops and you don't get the the lower parts you need to have boring uh, a boring year or a boring hour every now and then yes to to enjoy the tops and to find the tops and to reach the tops yeah because uh, and if you don't have that i guess drugs is the best thing because yeah. because then you force your body to to get the tops yes. by cocaine yeah. and then you will fall down yeah. and live horrible for a hour or a days mm. and then you take more cocaine choop, yeah. up again yeah. and i think uh, that that's um, that's how we deal with dynamic today yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> totally. and then in the meantime you're just uh, starting in Netflix or anything streaming a new yeah. series for like 100 hours yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, if, if I might say something because uh, you insp inspire an idea um, I think it's um, as an artist and uh, I play music as well uh, I am also also this called workshop leader Mm. that I looked at, I, lo I kind of hate the word work sh workshop. It's <laughs> the worst combination ever, but I call it play free leader. Yeah. And, uh, and I have, I've realized that uh, getting bored is, is as you said, it, is, is very essential because you then synchronize with, with the nothingness or with no purpose, a time with no purpose. And when you get to time with no purpose, then you can, and only then you can synchronize with one of the most important activities in the whole fucking human history, which was the search of the soul, yeah. the search of meaning, wondering about life, who I am, is there any God, you know, who we are, and all these uh, absolutely fundamental questions they have to have started when someone didn't have anything to do you know <laughs> it wasn't that oh i have to dish i have to go and dish the di uh, do the dishes and then it's like oh wh who is god it's like no you are doing the dishes so as long as we have a society that is only focused on 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 um, on the production result quantitative things uh, and 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 with even with with the thing with purpose like w it's so important that there is a space of emptiness or wondering and this is the thing there's the 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 image of the dreamer is the image of the wanderer is the person who is looking beyond what is around because what is around is it's is not feeding enough the soul of this person right and um, so then, the, then, then the dreamers or the artists uh, start wondering, and and the philosophers, the great religious leaders, everything starts by wondering, but basically getting bored. What yeah. the heck am I gonna do now? <laughs> yeah. So we are uh, eliminating <coughs> boredness. It's it's eliminating actually maybe the only way that we can be humans. Yeah. Yeah, I guess we could talk for like three, four, five, six hours. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but, but I think we we need to. I will just check my. Um, yeah, I think we we su summed it all up. Uh, thanks, huge thanks. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> thanks, thanks. I will uh, I will probably share this uh, next uh, next week. Mm -hmm. So. Um, and I will make a, a recap in the beginning mm -hmm. uh, before I start this uh, interview. So, uh, so a big thanks. Yeah, thank you for your interest and uh, congratulations because yeah. uh, you are um, you are creating, uh, recopulating and creating stories for the next generation to hear what yeah. was before and what we could be. Uh, so it's fundamental. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> thanks. thanks. <laughs>